Hey guys, I'm back home and resuming work on the Philco 60 project. I looked up the specs for this Philco 3760 speaker and they seem to be the same as the Philco 60. The field coil is the same resistance and so is the output transformer primary. So I have removed the nuts from the speaker and let's take a look at it. Uh, both uh, the condition of the cone and then I'll measure the uh, resistance to see if it's actually uh, good. Gotta be careful when you're doing this because there's four screws that hold these in and if you're not careful <laughs> you slip you could jab one of those screws through the paper cone. It's certainly a lot better looking than the other one. That's for sure. So there's, there's probably where somebody long ago accidentally was putting this in a jab to screw through it a little bit. But it's not too bad. A minor tear there. And uh, a little bit over there. But that's uh, certainly all. Uh, absolutely nothing uh, too uh, bad. Alright, so. This cabinet out of the way. And then get on an ohm meter and... Uh, Check the resistance readings. Here they are face down side by side and boy they sure do look similar. Very very similar. The only thing I can see that's really different is uh, this has a bit of an elongated hole whereas that's round and the stamp on the field coil back here is a little bit different. But the output transformer looks exactly the same even down to the little details like with this wire terminals wrapped around here. Uh, so, here is the common connector for both the field coil and the transformer primary. So, you should read about 1140 for the field coil, around 400 for the output transformer primary. So, this is the field coil. And that's pretty darn good. It says 1140. I got 1139. That's, that's good enough for me. And for the uh, output transformer. Alright, 416 and I was looking for 400. So, I think we have got a winner. I'm going to put this on the side so it doesn't get damaged while I continue working on the radio. I also have a speaker in my Philco 70 that's in a very similar state where the the cone, the spider, and the voice coil are missing, but the field coil and output transformer are good. So uh, I did ask around online and it turns out that these are kind of com complicated to, re to recone because, well because of those pieces are missing. These um, spiders of the style and the voice calls are not readily available so you kind of do have to make your own or if you're lucky you've got a stash of some new old stock ones so what I'm gonna do is put this aside for now along with the Philco 70 speaker and I'll ask around online and uh, I've already got some leads and a couple guys that might be able to do it but I don't really have the funds to get that done right now but one of these days I will certainly send up both speakers and, uh, and get them properly reconed. So I uh, took this this uh, busted up old speaker and I was going to stick it in the 3760 cabinet just this for somewhere to store it for the time being but it wouldn't fit which seemed really odd because they sure look like they're the same size and then I thought about uh, why this might have these elongated mounting holes well, that's because um, this style, I imagine, will fit in several, or maybe it's a replacement for several of the older styles. So they made those elongated holes so it would line up better in a variety of uh, uh, cabinets. Because the, the framers are, are exactly the same size. And the mounting holes do line up at some point in the slot as you go around. But the uh, this speaker, when you look at where the marks are, where the screws were, they were towards the, the innermost part of that slot, so much closer to the center. Whereas the old Phil Philco 60 holes are to the outer edge of the slot. 
So this I'm sure will fit fine in an either cabinet, but this one will not. So I'll just have to stick it in a box for, for now. A package just arrived from renovatedradios.com. They make a lot of reproduction rubber and plastic parts for radios and TVs. They especially have a lot of parts for filter radios. So I have ordered up some reproduction rubber parts for my Filco 60 and the 37611. Those include chassis shock mounts, tuning capacitor shock mounts, and uh, the tuning sub-chassis shock mount for the 37611. I've used them before. They make really quality parts. Uh, they also have parts for the Motorola VT71 7-inch TVs. Uh, including the knobs and um, the mask that goes around the 7 inch picture tube that are always rotted away in those old sets. I was pleasantly surprised that it showed up today because I ordered this uh, on Saturday and it was here by Thursday in spite of all the snow and the cold and so on. So I'll pop open the box and show you what I got. Okay, here is what I ordered. Everything was in stock, which is just awesome. These are two sizes of chassis uh, shock mounts. I think these will work out well in the Filco 60 from near as I could tell by studying the old hardened um, rubber that was still left in the cabinet and measuring the, uh, the diameter of the hole. And I think these might work out well in the 37611 or maybe these larger ones it's always nice to have some extras on hand because just about every radio from the 30s into the 40s uses these the idea is that the metal chassis sits on top of these rather than directly bolted to the wooden cabinet and that's the speaker vibration doesn't mess up the radio because if it was vibrating it could affect the tuning capacitor and also cause the tubes to uh, elements to vibrate a little which can throw off the local oscillator and so on. These further isolate the tuning capacitor. Uh, they, the, it floats on these three supports which uh, and there's a bolt that goes through under the chassis. I'll show you that in a moment on the Filco 60. These are Filco corner mounts. A lot of their radios from the 30s and even some of their TVs in the 40s use these one at the cor each corner of the chassis. Basically it's, it's a variation instead of using these, these slide onto the chassis and it floats on these guys. And these are used to isolate that sub-chassis on the Filco 37611 and also my Filco 3710 uses these and I think the Filco 3760 uh, maybe even one more of my radios. So I just ordered up two sets for now. I'm going to try them in the 37611 and see how it goes. I've never tried these before, but certainly the ones that are in there have rotted away. If you recall, my 37611, the, the dial scale was so low, the AM band wasn't even visible. There's two reasons. One is these mounts were shot, and two, the chassis mounts were completely rotted away. So between these two, that should be just fine. And uh, between these and these, I should be all set for the Filco 60. I also got this package today. What's in here is a recent eBay score. Well, what it is is something that can be quite, quite hard to find, which is a, a complete a matching set in good condition of Motorola VT71 knobs specifically for the blonde set. If you recall, uh, my earlier, I did an earlier little multi-part video series on my assembling my blonde VT71. The knobs I used for that were dark brown and it was some variation from knob to knob with that brown color. And also the concentric rings I think were slightly different colors. So I'm really glad to get this set. They look to be in really good shape. That grunge should come right off. Uh, by soaking them in uh, some detergent for a few hours. These channel knobs are especially a pain to get. This one's in really good condition. It's even got the little dot there, which is the indicator of which channel you're on. But the most difficult of all to find are the fine-tuning knobs, because these fall off so easily. 
they're just uh, it's a, a little bit of a knurled shaft in there and they don't uh, push on very far so that they really uh, want to fall off sets. But the, the renovated radio place I just mentioned uh, does now make reproduction ones but they only have the brown color. They look really nice and I may order a set someday for one of my for my mahogany set. Uh, but I think these will look great on the blonde. Alright, time to check those coils. There are four of them. Two of them are the ones I exposed that were under the big box shield. There's one in this can, and there's one in here. From the bottom side, you can see these are two are pretty well exposed. And this one and this guy have kind of a weird mounting assembly where it's sort of like a clamp. Then there's kind of a waxy plug on the bottom. And there appear to be four wires coming out. Now, judging from the schematic here, I believe that those are the two IF coils because those have four leads coming out of them. And one here and one here. The other two coils are a bit more complicated because uh, they have tap points for the two bands. Remember this radio covers the AM broadcast band and a shortwave band. So when you throw the band switch it uh, changes the pickoff point on these coils. So this one is for the local oscillator, which uh, goes into here, the, the detector oscillator tube. And the other one is for the antenna um, coil. Uh, so that's what these two must be, because these are far more complicated. Uh, this is the 6A7 tube. So and I'm going to just, <laughs> until I know better, I'm going to assume that the coil closest to it is the local oscillator coil and that this is the antenna coil. You can see that a lot of these wires go over to this switch, which is the band switch here. One thing that makes this kind of a pain to do is that often on these old schematics, there are no pin numbers on the tubes. Otherwise, I can say go to the 78 tube and um, pick off this pin on the plate here and say, well, Whatever is connected to the, the plate must be this coil. Well, I don't know which pin on the plate, <laughs> which of these uh, pins is the plate. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time and go through a tube manual and write in some of these key pin numbers. i will make it much easier to trace out the wiring. Here's an example of what I'm doing. This tube is a number 78. I looked it up in the tube manual. And here's a basing diagram. Now on this diagram, they show the tube elements, but it always goes in numeric order clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six. On this diagram, they show those same tube elements in a circle, but these leads do not go in the same clockwise order. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have to look really close at the elements. For example, this topmost symbol here is the plate. Now if you look on here, the plate actually goes off to the side here and that's pin number two. The next lead down going off the side here is pin four as I've labeled here and so on. Let's see 75 here. There's that plate again and here's 75 tube and the plate is pin number two so I'll mark that down as a two and so on and so forth. I've got two more tubes to do. Alright, now that I've got that worked out, I want to start from the last IF can and work my way back. Um, right now I've got it hooked up to pin 2 on the pin on the uh, number 78 tube and the other end is clipped uh, over on this coil output and it says it should be 34 ohms. I've got 34.7 so I'm ready for that. Now the other side should be pin 3 and 4 on this tube. Now the way I know that's pin 3 and 4 is on these old type tubes. Two of these uh, pinholes here are larger. That's this and this. 
so the way you count the tubes is start from the larger one and go clockwise so that's been one that's been two that's been three now I also know from the schematic that pin three and four are connected together so you could also just look on this and see the two find the two pins that are connected directly together all right so that's one side of this which should measure 85 ohms now the other side well there's only four wires coming out of the coil so it's not too hard to find just the other lead that has continuity uh, so I get infinity on that lead and I get infinity there so it's got to be the last one which is going over to this trimmer capacitor There. Hmm. Well, that's not what I was expecting. The schematic says 85, and I've got 47. Now, that wire is going to some stuff in the circuitry, so really to isolate that, I should unsolder that lead so there's nothing else connected to the coil, um, which might be affecting that resistance reading. So, I will do that. Something else I noticed that's kind of interesting is that there are a ton of trimmers on this. All these holes back here are trimmer capacitors. There are one, two, three, four, five along the back. And then there's this guy. And uh, if you remember, there's a couple on the tuning capacitor itself. It turns out that four of these on the back, uh, I believe, are actually the capacitors across the IF can. So this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. On newer radios, these are usually buried inside of the can itself, and if they go bad, you got to dig the can open and replace the mica caps and all that. So um, it's actually kind of convenient. It adds a, a lot of wiring and, and uh, takes up a lot of space out of the chassis, but uh, once you kind of get a feel for how this is laid out, it's actually pretty simple. Here's the IF can, four wires coming out. Two of them go right to these two trimmer caps. And those are the two trimmer caps here and here. Before I investigate this one further, I think I'll jump ahead and start checking the other ones. Um, and then I'll come back to that. 